Welcome back to another episode of the Careful Boys. We got Tesh in the house, hey, yo. Yay. Tesh in the house. Tesh. What's up, man? What up, what up? Thanks for having me, everybody. And so how are you doing, man? What's new? A lot, a lot. Some big, some, uh, big news. We got a movie. Another. Coming out on uh, Netflix. Wow. Let's go. When did you film this? Uh, we filmed this outside of Pittsburgh in a small town in, in uh, Greensburg. Greensburg. I mean, when, when, Pennsylvania. When, when did you? When did you? Oh, when? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like two years ago. Oh, oh wow. snap! Yeah. We did the whole festival circuit during COVID. Wow. It's all digital. Damn. It's been a long, long uh, road, but. Oh, uh, this one's like your project, not like you're just. Uh, actor, but this I'm, I'm an actor and a producer on it. Oh, cool. good, good, good shit, dude. So it's yeah. called Definition, Please. Definition. It's gonna be on Netflix, uh, brought to us by the wonderful people at Array. Uh, it's gonna be out by the time this video is airing. So go on Netflix now streaming. It's called Definition, Please. Go support, go support, yeah. go support. It's a great South Asian, um, uh, South Asian story uh, about a former spelling bee champion Ooh, that, that never really leaves home. It doesn't amount to much. She has to stay at home, take care of her sick, sick mom. Her older brother comes back and- uh, No spoilers, no spoilers. Let's just say shit ensues. Shit ensues. It's a it's a nice nice family dramedy. Oh, is there like a? a <laughs> That's the title of the movie. Shit, shit ensues. <laughs> when I hear shit ensues, I think of like Indian Vin Diesel comes out. <laughs> There might be a scene where like uh, in diesel like in yeah. diesel in diesel shows up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he gets into a rickshaw yeah. and he drives it. Off the roof of the Taj Mahal, <laughs> and he's flying in the air like and that. Then it gets so high, we go to the moon. Yes, <laughs> you should make a Bollywood movie. Yeah, right. Ta-da! Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. guy gets movie making, man. That's it. That's all you need. Just action. When does he say family? <laughs> <laughs> Be familiar. Family. Oh, Are you my family? I can't even do it. With that. I can't even no, do that no, with no, straight. Because like I'm thinking of him in my ear. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> He's just riding. You know, elephant. Fast and the Furious would do really well with a, like a cab driver from India because the the traffic in India is fucking horrendous. Oh, dude, there's no rules. That's a new spinoff. Just if a Fast could, and the Furious. You could be the Indian Paul Walker. It would be like slow and agitated. That would be that would be the Indian equivalent. <laughs> that was kind of like in uh, Rush Hour Three when they're in Paris, France. Their driver was just like a Parisian driver. But I guess since he was so good, like he was taking Jackie Chan and uh, Chris Tucker around town. What? Really? Yeah. Like uh, off camera? Oh, like off camera. I was like, did they do this in the movie? You're talking in real life or in the in movie? The movie. Oh, yeah. oh, that's plans. Oh, okay. He was like, he was such a good driver. Yeah. No, no, in the movie. Right, in the movie. You know that movie is not real, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 in the movie. Because then I'm thinking about the dude from, uh, what is it, uh, Deadpool? Oh yeah, Karin. Oh, Karin. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. right. I was like, I like that guy. Yeah, that guy's yeah. sick too. Karin uh, Sony, what's up buddy if you see this? Hi. I love you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, so what does it mean to, uh, for in terms of your specific role as a producer on this one? Like what? Um, so I, I uh, slap some money on that bitch, but like producer baby. <laughs> not, not so much money. No money. I didn't, you know, have money. <laughs> money. No, uh, but more just sort of the active responsibilities of of helping organize things, helping plan things, post press. Um, or of sort of all of the business stuff that goes into Yo. Movies, movie making. Was that diff difficult to like mix that while you're creatively involved in it and also like acting in it? Well, when I'm there filming, I'm very much focused on the process of filming, you know. So my job there on set was to be the actor mm -hmm. and to play that role and make sure that I'm fulfilling those duties. So uh, you don't ever go like, oh, that's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, I wasn't wearing that hat. I'm sure other other people uh, were. Different producer. Yeah, different yeah. producer. We had a great yeah, yeah, yeah. team. Um, <laughs> Sujata Day, who is the director, writer, and stars in the movie. So she wore many hats. Um, Cameron Fife, wonderful producer here in C Sortie, mm -hmm. my old college buddy that I ringed in. Um, so we had a we had a great team of people at a. June Street Films and, and Adjust Productions, and then Ava DuVernay's company, uh, Ray, picked it up and Sick. we're bringing it to Netflix. So we, That's we've awesome. been on. Congrats, man. We've got a really great team, and I'm, I'm excited for everyone to see it. When you, you know? bring it to Netflix, is it like cha ching or not? It depends. We're, we're hoping, you know. Oh, you don't know? We'll find out. After the streams? We'll out, so. Is that how they pay you? Uh, no, there's a deal set in place, but, you know, I will. Discuss Not that off cam. <laughs> oh. so watch the movie. Because that's why we oh. sign contracts. <laughs> <laughs> if, you get, if you get paid by stream, you guys fucking watch it a million times yeah, and so just have it playing over and over and over and over. I just I just want to say this to everyone out there. You know, it, it very um, it deals with a lot of topics sort of in the in 
the South Asian culture and, and Asian culture abroad, you know, there's a lot of uh, mental health issues that we bring up. And I think it'll be relatable to a lot of families. So please check it out. If you watch it, we'll get more Asian content, more South Asian content. I want to see Vin. I want to see In Diesel, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't you guys want to see a Fast and the see. Furious? Fuck yeah. Just not oh. Fast and the Furious, Fast Indian Furious. Fast Indian, Indian Furious. Furious. <laughs> just with all Asian people, that'd be fun. Just there would just be arguments about who could get the best deal at a car dealer. Yeah. <laughs> No, you're not paying that much. They're just haggling <laughs> yeah, the whole time. <laughs> the whole movie is us haggling. <laughs> and then still traveling on elephants. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be sick, dude. Couldn't get the deal. We I should want. just do an Asian Fast and Furious. It would just be yeah. sponsored okay, by. Okay, Tokyo Tom. Drift. Just yeah, have a, a not white actor. Yeah, no, yeah. It'll be it'll call it'll be called accident. <laughs> That's it. Everyone's just crashing. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be called accident. <laughs> we have visors and gloves yeah, on the yeah. show. Get ready to go. Put on our race. So, clothes. so what's like uh, during the filming that you said it happened two years ago? Like, what's a uh, one just interesting story that happened during filming? One interesting story. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. It was such a whirlwind. Something that I really enjoyed was my hotel was next to a Sheets. I don't know if you guys know what that is. What's a what's Sheets? That? I don't even know. It's what like that is. a. It's like a. Super convenient store. It's like a 7-Eleven that's attached to a gas station. Are you guys familiar with Wawa? Yeah. Okay, so it's basically a massive competitor to Wawa. Oh. But this and this might be, you know, unpopular opinion. I've had both Wawa and Sheets, and I gotta say, Sheets is pretty legit. Like, Where's Sheets? Is it is it like an East Coast thing? It's kind of, but it's not in New York. Like, oh, okay. To like New Jersey, closer to Pennsylvania. Yeah. And then I think they're probably in like Virginia and the Carolinas. But it's it's like a fast casual convenience store. But you can get pretty some some pretty dope sandwiches. Schmiskits. Oh. A schmiskit. That's like their version of like a bacon are egg you, and cheese on a biscuit. Time out. Are you really telling me this one most most interesting story you Dude. can think of right now? The fucking let me interesting just, sandwich. Let me just tell you. Let me fucking tell you. We shot the movie in 14 days. I was basically Holy like, shit. I was like oh. a bad out of hell. Should have led with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, That's a good I was trying to give you a like, so like, hear about the sandwiches up. right now. <laughs> he, dude, that was the most interesting thing. I was like, oh my god, I'm going to get mozzarella sticks. I'm going to have 14 different dipping sauces. <laughs> I mean, filming the movie was amazing. Every day. Okay. Garlic. Fucking parmesan. You know, after working a 15 hour day, 18 hour day. All you want to do is eat. I just want to eat. Every day was like 15 to 18 hours? It was, I would say 12 to 15 hours. Ooh. It wasn't cr like, look, we had the greatest time. I had the greatest time. Yeah. Uh, the crew took care of me, cast and crew took care of me. I had great scene partners, great producing partners, great director. Um, Except Kunal, but I yeah, mean. fuck Kunal. <laughs> but we, I, Kunal and I are in the fuck Indian Kunal. actor universe, metaverse, because it, metaverse, because you know. If you haven't seen Kunal and Shang Chi's in there. <laughs> uh, but he was in another movie that I was in called Hot Mess Holiday, which was on Comedy Central, and he plays a spelling bee champion in that movie. And in this movie, Definition Please, he plays a spelling bee. bee. I don't, well, he's not a champion because he loses. Oh, spelling oh. bee. To our main character Monica, but he's a spelling bee contender. Wow. So we, wow. I have this running joke with him that him and I are. Intrinsically connected. Is that a like trope in bees. the Indian community about spelling bees? Does everyone well, do it? I don't like the last That's 82 the spelling bee champions have been Indian. There was like oh. when we were filming the movie two years ago, I believe there was an eight-way tie. Seven of the contestants were Indian, and the, the eighth contestant was just like a small white Jewish girl. Wow. So, <laughs> That's pretty dominant. Pretty dumb. Dude, dude the, the what? What spelling bees are yeah. like NBA dominant, you know, yeah. like yeah. we dominated. Well, well, who started it? Like, uh -huh. what got Indians to go like this is my shit. I don't know. Some auntie, some uncle. They're like, you can't run, you can't jump, but you can spell. <laughs> There's physics, engineering, like you guys smash so many of those things. Yeah. I think things that are uh, repetitive, that, we, that can be learned through repetition. That's why I think uh, a lot of South Asians and, and you know, Asians in general are good at individual you know, sports where we focus on that. Go yeah. play tennis. Learn the piano. The individual sport of being a tech CEO. Yeah, that's exactly. The, the Indian yeah. That's that's the greatest. Right yeah, we're we're dominating. Cause when you're a tech CEO, you're alone at the top, taking money from everybody. So. Tough job. <laughs> Damn. Tough job. So who's the character that you play in this movie? I play uh, the brother. Oh, the older brother. brother. That comes home. Uh, it's our father's one year death anniversary, and so. It's a kind of a reunion between the mom and the brother and sister. So it starts off a little bit sad. Some heavy it stuff. starts off bubble. real. Yeah, it's real. real. It's real. It's real. 
wholesome. Yeah, and uh, you know, there's there's some skeletons in the closet that they have to confront. Mm. I don't want to give away any spoilers, yeah. so everyone... That's the juicy part. Yeah, Ooh. check it out. Check it out, we're getting good reviews. Today's video is brought to you by Bombas. Bombas mission? It's pretty simple. Make the most comfortable clothes ever and match every item sold with an equal item donated. When you buy Bombas, you are also giving to someone in need. Bombas designed their socks, underwears, and shirts to be so comfortable that you can't wait to put on every single day. Everything they make is soft. Seamless, tagless, and has a luxuriously cozy feel. They're made from super soft materials like merino wool, pima cotton, and even cashmere, which makes them perfect for cozy winter layers. There's a pair of Bomba socks for everything you do. Really? They come in tons of options like comfy performance styles for every sport and activity that keeps you moving. Bomba t-shirts are made with thoughtful design features like invisible seams, soft fabrics, and just the right weight so it hangs. Bombas underwear has this like barely there feel. Uh oh. With second skin support that make you even forget that they're even there. That's good. But in a good way. Mm hmm. And did you know that socks, underwear, and t shirts are the number one most requested items at a homeless shelter? That's why Bombas donates one item for every item sold. So far, Bombas customers like you has helped donate over. 50 million essential items of clothing. So if you want some super comfortable clothes and you want to help out a good cause, go to bombas.com slash off the record to get 20% off any purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash off the record to get 20% off any purchase. Bombas.com slash off the record. We've got good reviews. We've got a New York Times review come out today. Oh awesome. yeah. Wow. That's awesome, That's dude. Awesome. We're really excited. So, so far as, as, at the time filming this video, we have 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, if wow. that matters to anyone out there. That's a big deal though. That's a big deal. I, that matters to me when I pick movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you get 80% on Rotten Tomatoes? That's like, wow. I, I really always good. love it when our friends become successful, but I also don't because they don't come back on the show. Because their publicist, their publicist goes, it's too dangerous to be on Just Kidding News, don't fucking get back on it. I mean, he's promoted. Is that what happens? He's been successful for a while, he's here. Thank you. Yeah. But but he's not like, he's not like Shang-Chi successful. <laughs> like Kanal, you know what I mean? <laughs> like not Kanal, you know what I mean? Like Kanal in Shang-Chi where he doesn't say a single word. Have you gotten Kanal on the show? He's, I like this. Fuck Kanal. No. <laughs> he doesn't want to do no, it. I, just, I love Kanal. He's like, I'm too funny for the show. I'm too funny. No, he's great. I love him. I should reach out to him actually. Well, it, uh, most of it is because people get busy or like. You guys have history. You guys all went to college. Yeah, he's on me. That yeah, and I, I met Kanal through Lawrence Lawrence Cow because they were roommates. Do you know who Lawrence Cow is? Mm, I don't think I've met. Lawrence Cow is uh, plays Tommy Wan Wu Assassins, little Asian dude. Um, and but they had a uh, they were yeah they had a um, a place in K Town together for a while. Yeah okay. yeah. Okay cool. Well, We're all I guess connected. that's, since he doesn't know Lawrence, that's the end of that one. Yeah, <laughs> we can just move doesn't on matter. Over. It doesn't matter. But anyways, we're all in the movie. Uh, when you when you become like, fucking A-list, 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 yeah. you're gonna stab me with <laughs> this fake knife. He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kidnap you and hold you ransom. <laughs> A-list, 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 right? That's See, that firm. thing, you just look like you're gonna shove that in my ass. Oh, right? that's a music <laughs> note. <laughs> that's a music right. note. Was that, a, was that to feed fish? Is that like a fish tank? No, it's a it's a music tool. It's like this. It it's there's no batteries, but then. It's <laughs> oh, that's cute. Oh, and it what? speaks. I like it. It's so Joe. It's ridiculous. So um, will you still show show up on the show? I'm gonna hold you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking hold you to it. Yeah, man. All right, cool. He's got a little PTSD on it. people, kind of. I know. Like, no, I, when we do that, everyone just leaves us and never comes back. We should do. We should do. A, we should do a show in Vegas. We should just do it like. You know, in the oh, casino, yeah. in the middle of the floor. Oh, maybe yeah. the Trump Tower? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Will they be able to handle it? doing the lobby of the Trump Towers? The <laughs> lobby? <laughs> they have great chandeliers so, there. So you filmed that about two years ago. Yeah. yeah. And it's finally coming out now. Finally so coming out now. So what have you worked on recently or about to work on that maybe will come out later? Is there any, anything, any project in the pod? Shang-Chi 2? Uh, I'm right now. I'm just writing, developing stuff, looking, looking to pitch to networks. Um, we've got some new Barbie stuff coming down the pipeline. Yeah. Uh, I don't have dates on those, but yeah, yeah. we recorded them. So. <laughs> if you could give a little bit of juice, a little bit of me on something that you're like, kind of, you know, creatively bubbling around in your own mind, you know, like writing, producing, that, like you just said, what, give us a little taste. Uh, yeah, so I've got, I've got two, two shows that I'm working on right now. One is a family drama that takes place in Malaysia. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Dope. And when you say shows, are you mentally and intentionally, like, episodically creating? Yeah, this something? one, this okay. one is episodic. 
And then another one I'm de uh, developing with one of my very close friends um, is about uh, kind of our experiences growing up with each other. And um, it's about this, this gay kid who burns down his apartment and he has to move back in with his, with his helicopter mom. Your friend burnt out the uh, apartment? No, that, that, that's, that's, uh, we made that part. <laughs> <laughs> but the gay you know, the only best part, only the best the part. The gay part's yeah, the gay real, part's yeah, that's it. Uh, but it's kind of this comedy about f uh, finding love and, and dealing with kind of familiar relationships. And yeah. Because if you have a gay homie and he's hitting on you, how do you deal with that? Just <laughs> take it as a compliment. <laughs> take it on the chin, yo. Yeah, but then that's kind of like how- Just like don't drink guy, too much together. That's kind of like how if you have a platonic friendship with a girl and then she's like really into you, but you're not really into her. And then it's like, but how do you say no, but then still stay friends. And then they're not really lying just to simp for you. I feel like you've had this problem happen to you so many times. <laughs> you're speaking from a deep, deep rooted experience. I had to, I had to end the friendship. Yeah, I bet you everyone can relate to that. Yeah. A chick, like a chick that's really yeah, just yeah. just having like, God, like in four, your four entire life being really close to like you know a friend of the opposite sex and then like having some sort of uh, like gray that? area. Yeah, you know, I had an accidental one that yeah. I was like turned into Geo, right? No. That was one. Yeah. <laughs> and I married her. <laughs> this one tripped me out because you know I just like to fuck around. So I had one of my tight friends in high school. I don't know why, but I thought it would be funny if I uh, broke it to her that I'm actually in love with her. Yo. And then oh, so, yeah, and then she, <laughs> so I started talking about it, and she goes, "No, really?" And I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, I, "I've been hiding these feelings for so long." It's full, dude. How could you? Monster, I kept, how could you? Going, I kept going, and then she was like, "I don't know. It's gonna change so many things in the friend dynamic." I'm like. I know. I just had to get on my chest, and then well, you kept going. When and you then said, finally, when I when I said, you doubled down. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, I, like and I, I, and I laid it out. Person. She was like, "Oh, oh my God, this is crazy." She goes, I, "But I can't see us working out." I'm like, "Oh, you're disgusting. What the fuck?" And then I spit. I, I uh, he says, spit you're on her. disgusting. <laughs> you spit on her face. It's you're not, fucking idiot. I can't believe you This is on the phone. Yeah. This is on the phone. This is during like you know like in high school in our in our days it's. You could be on the phone for hours. Yeah, yeah. of course. Because that's all you really had. You were on the phone until your parents picked it up and fucking yelled at you. Yeah. yeah. Very much. And then I You're got like, the, the feelings fucking... to come out the other way, and I was like, oh, fuck. I think I fucked up. Dude, that's so Because she realized she liked you? Yeah, she said she could see a future together, and then I was <gasps> like, uh-oh. <laughs> Oh man! And so wait, how do you put the like, like, yeah. like the candy back in the piñata? You know, I'm like, you can't, you can't do that, bro. It all came out. I don't know if you've seen piñatas after they released their. How do you put the semen back in the fucking shaft, bro? Like, what do you? Oh, no. This poor girl's the piñata. Did you ever? Did the friendship ever recover? Or was that it? No it, it actually way. did. She's fucking cool as fuck. Wow. And it recovered, but it was just. It recovered, but somewhere inside, something died. Yeah. 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 She's gonna come kill you yeah. one day. Yeah. You scarred her, dude. Wow. I know, maybe. That's fucked up, dude. It's pretty funny though. An asshole, <laughs> but we're friends, so it's okay. But if you know Bart, you're like, that is the most Bart thing to do. <laughs> That's true. Just to fuck around, like no real point. The most Bart to... part is when he goes, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like this at home on the phone. Oh no, Bart messed up. <laughs> he just put it on mute. You know, he like. <laughs> <laughs> He's like tying it around, it like you know, because he had he does the whole static thing. Oh no, go through a tunnel. <laughs> what did you hope would happen? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. like, I am fucking around too. <laughs> Don't know. I think I'm just talking and having a good time, and then I was like, What if she just? What if she was like, Nah, dude, you're gross. Like, what if she was like, <laughs> yeah, No fucking way. Like, yeah. you're disgusting. I that think probably would have been I, easier. Yeah. <laughs> that might have been easier, and I think I had the upper hand in the conversation because I knew I'm fucking around. Mm. So if it backfired, it's like, oh, oh yeah, like I was I'm joking anyway. Or maybe you grow up now and you actually realize maybe you did like her. Yeah, like maybe that was the love of your life. <laughs> maybe being able to joke around that like comfortably with somebody. Subconscious. This is this is how you express your love. Hey, shout her out. Name, last name. Nah. Bye. <laughs> Give us her social security number. I feel like Bart would propose marriage just to get a reaction and see what happens. <laughs> and then be like, uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> you really Frank, thought this was real? Yeah. He's all putting it on the ring. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, dude, I ate like 90 no, boxes honestly, of Cracker Jacks. Honestly, I probably would. And because like these big events to me are like more jokey, I never proposed to Gio. <laughs> 
because the real shit, I don't do the, it's almost the opposite in my brain. So how did you ask her to... We ask? didn't, we just started planning it. You just, you just put her like... You were just like, you're coming with me? We just started planning it. <laughs> Get in the car. Planned it, we didn't even have a ring. We didn't have like, I didn't put anything on her finger or anything. We bought the ring like a year or two after we and got it. similarly, a part of her inside died. I know, found out later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll plan, we'll plan, a, we're playing a secret proposal to me, you know, oh, show, yeah. show her you your romantic like side. I know, I'm a fuckhead, I don't know. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta run it by Ryan or Joe or something, dude. I could run it by Joe, but he's probably gonna be down with whatever idea I have. Yeah, <laughs> you should always run it by Joe, though, I do think. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Joe just adds more flair to it, I know. and then probably. it becomes even crazier. You should do idea. two versions, your version and the version that's given by Joe. Yeah, that's you just take it from the top and you do yeah. <laughs> like, we're gonna restart idea, out here. We're gonna put both of these on YouTube, we'll see which one people like better. And we'll just stick with that story. I'm pretty romantic. Romantic. Out of the two? <laughs> Out of both of you guys? Joe, I think Joe might be more. What's romantic? the most romantic thing you've done? You might be pretty romantic. Fucking put Wait. semen in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Fucking but, ate her pussy in Las Vegas, bro. In the <laughs> that was it? In Vegas? In Vegas? Yeah, circus, circus. Baby. It was special. In the, tr in the Trump casino? Yeah, it was at the Trump Tower. No, I'm just <laughs>